Hey everyone, I just wanted to do another video here on a topic, actually, it's a topic that I'm probably not going to cover again, and I don't think very few people have covered this before, so it's about uh, the culture war, feminism, and Mongolian eagle huntresses. Stay with me here. Alright, so, the story begins on May 7th, where the UN Women's Twitter account posted... Ashel Pan broke the stereotype that only men could master the hunt and hunt with eagles. She became Mongolia's first ever eagle huntress. Hashtag Planet 5050. And then right here it says, Gender doesn't matter to eagles. What matters is your mastery. So, obviously, they are going for a very feminist message. You know, they, they, they only want uh, a specific kind of... of, of uh, of people watching. It's a very family-friendly message here. And, you know, I really think that it makes, it makes a case that, you know, the marketing community believes that this is going to appeal to a much larger audience. So it sounds like a great story. You know, she's the first eagle huntress in, you know, in Mongolia. Great story. We have a guy, Otto Bell, who is a uh, doc film documentary guy who gets the idea from an Israeli photographer who ends up going down there and photographing these people, and it sounds like a really good story. And the visuals are honestly very amazing visuals. I will say that. Like, the scenes and everything, the way it looks, top-notch, right? However, this is the question, right? What else is behind this marketing? Because as soon as I saw it, I said my comment was, and this is how I got involved in this story, actually, somehow. I commented and said, well, you know, I don't actually think that this is about, you know, politics. I think this is just her and we should celebrate her skills and her accomplishments and not make this about us or make this about something else, you know, other than her accomplishments, right? And I said, because I'm, you know, I just always triggering everybody. And I get a response back from a person called Megan Fitzjames. And she basically hits me up and says, that she believes that this, that this is all fake. That what they've put here is all fake. And basically been orchestrated for that purpose. So here she is right here. She's a Canadian researcher from British Columbia, Vancouver. And she's decided that she is going to wage a kind of conflict against all of these news organizations, including BBC, including Canadian news organizations, including, I'm pretty sure the Huffington Post was in on that, I'm pretty sure the Guardian, I, I, I don't know, just a lot of, including TED as well, I, I don't know if it's TEDx, yeah, TEDx as well, the filmmaker did a TEDx talk, so that's how he popularized this, and a lot of people just ate it up, because they were like, wow, this is a great, it's a great story, right? So, this lady hits me up after I commented on it, because, you know, I'm assuming everyone is just, you know, hitting positive feedback, whatever. I was one of the only negative commenters on that thing. So she hits me up and she says, hey, uh, this is not true. This entire uh, story has been fabricated because they want to, s this guy, Otto Bell, and this other Israeli photographer are basically exploiting this girl and they've staged the whole thing and... You know, brilliant visuals be damned, basically, and as well as ethical journalism or, or ethical reporting, anyways. So, I'm just going to read it to you so you get a little understanding of this. This is from Palo Alto Online. This is called Hunting the Truth, and it was one of the articles sent to me by the researcher Megan Fitzjames. Back in 1922, Robert J. Flaherty made the controversial documentary docudrama Nan Nook of the North which he purported to be a non-fiction account of an Inuit hunter, but which included untruths, distortions, distortions, and stage sequences. Now in 2006, we have Otto Bell's The Eagle Huntress, a Disney-esque documentary bucking for awards and a big box office draw by creating an appealing story against an exotic backdrop. The Eagle Huntress essays... The, that, uh, the, the uh, essays the accomplish documents the accomplishments of a 13-year-old Aishal Pan framed by Bell, who is the, the documentary maker, as having a dream of being the first eagle huntress in Mongolia. 2,000-year-old Kazakh tradition of eagle hunting remains male-dominated, making Isil Pan an outlier, and one might assume a long shot as a competitor in the annual Golden Eagle Festival. With the, with the full support of her family, 
dad and granddad are both eagle hunters. Aishal Pan collects a female golden eagle, trains her, trains, competes in the festival, and for an encore, goes eagle hunting for a fox in a wintry in the wintry wilds of Mo Mongolian steppe. All of the above is more or less true, and certainly makes for a commercially appealing story. Pop documentarian Morgan Spurlock and Star Wars Daisy Ridley came on the board as executive producers. Ridley also recorded five minutes of narration. The film sold to Sony Pictures Classics at the Sundance Film Festival and chart-topping pop star Sia recorded an original song, Angel by the Wings, for the end credits. Oscars, here we come. So basically, you can see they're setting it up. They have all the major setup. They have the Star Wars people. They have the celebrity backing. They have the feminist propaganda. They have all the things that, that a mainstream corporation thinks that it needs to create the fake window dressing of a grassroots movement or a grassroots project. Taken at face value, The Eagle Huntress seems to be a fine starter documentary for kids. With its G-rating and politically correct feminism, it's a family-friendly, nature-themed adventure to empower girls and schoolboys about girl power. Unfortunately, even seen outside of a larger context, The Eagle Huntress smells a bit fishy. The film's interviewer seems to, be, seem to have seem coached to give Belle the sound bites he wants, says Dad, as she is a strong and courageous girl and her eagle a strong bird. It matches Aishlo Pan. And certain situations or bits of dialogue feel very constructed. Those feelings are easy enough to shake off since Aishlo Pan makes an impressive and sunny heroine and the doc about her is so slick. But the narrative of Aishlo Pan and her supportive family struggling against closed-minded tradition, tradition misleads. And Bell sweeps under the rug any inconvenient truths that challenge his story. A little research shows that Bell has to reach far to find the hams, the hamrung elders, and he depicts as clinging to a rigid gender to rigid gender rules. The film willfully ignores the similar story of female eagle hunter Mac Penn. I'm not even going to attempt that name because it's just going to butcher it, and I want to do it justice. So, and completely leaves out that Aishlo Pan's tutelage as an eagle hunter was suggested by, to her family by the photographer Asher Spadinsky as part of the art project. So that's part of the controversy. They try and make it seem like, okay, first of all, I watched the 30, 34 minute video that this researcher put and put a lot of work into and made it really, really good. And, and, and honestly, I think that she's made a very convincing case that this Asher Spadinsky guy went out of his way to make it appear like she was an eagle hunter and stage the whole thing, convinced her father, convinced everyone to do this, even though this is a complete falsehood. All, all for the sake of pandering to a specific community, to the feminist community, lying to feminists, lying to all of them to convince them that this is the right project to fund. And it even got the attraction of large Star Wars people, Sia, lots of other people. So this is not a small project. This is, this is completely in the mainstream area and this is easily Googleable to find out that this is bullshit or at least that there are co ethical concerns about how this took place and why it took place. Stanford University's own professor Adrian Mayer recently weighed in with her essay The Eagle Huntress, Ancient Traditions and New Generations. A Canadian researcher, Megan Fitzjames, has vigorously investigated and reported Bell's unethical practice. All of the above can be found online. The well-packaged Eagle Huntress boasts gorgeous photography and an appealing story of can-do spirit, but as a documentary, it's only marginal, more credible than Nanook of the North. So have we really come a long way, baby? So I think that, oh, I'm going to provide these links for everyone. I'm going to provide everything in the description. So you can check this out for yourself. I think this is really interesting that they're using feminism to sell a fake documentary. And in fact, I think it's actually disrespecting feminists and feminism, and of course, I shall pan herself, this girl, because... It really seems like they're trying to sell her as a product and they're not really putting enough effort into figuring out whether or not it was a good thing to do to misrepresent these people, to misrepresent their way of life and whether or not this made their lives take a complete turn and we don't know what the impacts of this were going to be and, and, and it definitely has impacts for scholarship and for academia because if this is stuff is supposed to be presented as a realistic look at Mongolian culture or Kazakh society, it's been misrepresented and it's been politically altered to suit a western narrative. So if we think that we're helping those people, we're not. We're catering to our own delicate sensibilities and searching for heroes instead of finding real inspiration.
And I think that's the most important thing. This whole video has just been to popularize this topic and to make people realize that this, this documentary, probably fake, probably completely fabricated according to this researcher and to a lot of other evidence that I've discovered recently. So it appears once again that mainstream media and mainstream movie studios and a lot of these celebrities too, including Daisy Ridley and Sia, are either they've been lied to and the feminists that are supporting this, they've all been lied to or it takes on a much more sinister angle where this auto guy is just, you know, and he seems more than happy to keep portraying this false narrative out to everyone. So everyone, be rational, be skeptical, search for evidence, and try your best not to be fooled by this kind of marketing propaganda. Have a good day, and look up this girl's work, Megan Fitzgerald. She has a really good point to bring to this, and I hope more people see this. Thank you very much, and have a good day.